In this video, we'll look at automating tasks with Spotfire. You can automate some tasks in Spotfire by building jobs and running them in automation services. You can build most of the jobs you want via the Automation Services Job Builder tool and then run them using Automation Services. You can also use the Software Development Kit to build custom tasks if the tasks available in the Job Builder aren't adequate for your requirements. The most suitable person to build automation jobs and run them via Automation Services is a representative from the organization that is responsible for maintaining analysis files. So you won't typically find an analyst requiring this during the design and development of an analysis. The job builder is available from the tools menu. If I click on tools, about halfway down this menu, we'll see automation services job builder. We'll click on that and that will bring up the automation services job builder dialog. And you can see that it says here in the job builder window, this job does not contain any tasks. Add a first task by clicking add. And typically, a job is made up of multiple tasks. And if I click on add here, you can see that there are quite a number of tasks available out of the box from backend admin type tasks like remapping and replacing data sources to communication tasks like sending information to someone, perhaps an update on some process via email. Selecting a task opens a configuration dialog. So let's click on open analysis from library you'll see that we've got a dialog with the configuration details for this task. And this one's a pretty simple one. We're just going to specify a file from the library. Let's click on Browse. And here's the AsterDB web page analysis that we have open right now. We'll click on that and click OK. And you can see that it was already open in the background behind us here. But we're not using that one. We're actually specifying for the job to open it from the library at some other point. When you add another task, it will go beneath that one. So let's take an add-on task here. So we've opened an analysis. What do we want to do? We want to export that analysis to a PDF file. So we'll click on Export PDF. And you can see here that we've got some options. So we've got a destination path. And let's specify by name for our export file. We'll just call it Aster Visualization. And we'll click on Save. So there's the destination path there. We can also specify what to export from the active page to all pages and so on. We've also got other settings here and layouts under Advanced. We've got graphics that we can work with. We've got page headers and footers. And we can even specify a bookmark here. But we're not going to do that. We'll leave those options as they are for now. We'll go back to the General tab. And we'll see here that we've got our file name all specified. Now, once we're done and we're happy with our job, we can save it by selecting one of the save options from the file menu, file, save or save as. We'll just select save and we'll call it my job. And you'll notice that it's saving it as an XML file. And as an XML file, you realize that you can open it outside of Job Builder to edit it if you want. Or you can open it in Job Builder again as well. So let's just close this for now. Let's go here. Again, we'll open Job Builder. And we'll see we've got no job open. Let's click on File, Open. We'll select My Job. And now you can see that it opened that job again. Let's also go down into the folder. And here it is. We'll double click and see that it's just a regular XML file with a bunch of tags that relate to what we're going to do for our tasks. Let's close that. Now you'll also notice that under the tools menu, we can specify to execute locally or execute on server. And this is good for testing. Also understand that you can add or remove tasks at any time. And for example, here, you can move them up or down. So let's move export to PDF up above open analysis from library. Now, when we select tools, execute locally, what this will do, it's for testing in the current session. So because there's analysis file open, of course, it's going to work. But if we execute on server, 
it's going to execute the job on the automation services server, which is the server that we're currently on. So if I click on execute on server, that will tell me if this is going to work. It's a good test. Okay, and you can see that it failed. And it failed with the message, no analysis loaded. Well, of course, because we moved the export to PDF task above open analysis from library. So let's move this down again. Go back in here to tools, execute on server. And you can see that task one's already done. Task two is completing now. You can also run it in the background or cancel the job part way through it. Okay, and you can see that it's done. Let's click on close. We'll close job builder. We'll save changes. And let's go down into our folder and we'll see aster visualization.pdf. Let's double click on that. And this will open the file that we just printed from this visualization. And there you see the file that we just opened and exported to PDF. Now, here's the thing about running automation services jobs. Again, like you saw, we can use the tools execute menu items, but we can also deploy a job external to the job builder tool by using a task scheduler, for example, Windows Task Scheduler, or perhaps a Windows Cron application. How you do that is nicely summed up here on this TIPCO community web page. And I've included this URL in the README and another URL on creating custom tasks as well. And what you'll see here is that you require these two files, the client sender executable and the client sender executables configure file or config file. And these must be located in the same directory. And you also have to have an automation services job, of course, that you've built using Job Builder. Now, this file, this client job sender file, is an executable that's found in the automation services installation directory on your server. To schedule the job, you simply add the instructions here to a batch file. Now, it says here, enter the following text on the command line. You could do that to run it directly, but you would basically take this information this batch or script, if you will, and put that in a batch file and run that through your task scheduler. And this consists of the following very simple configurations. Okay, so basically what you do is you're specifying in the first part the client job center executable and its path. You also specify here the URL to the Spotfire server. And finally, you specify the job that you built in Job Builder. Then you run that, and you can schedule it through a scheduler to run overnight. So if you have something typical like replacing or refreshing your data source, it's a good idea to run that late at night or at a time when it's not being accessed. So this would be a time to run that automation service at night or at some point when your server is not under high demand. Okay, so in this video, we looked at automating tasks with Spotfire.